online kids church. I really need your help. I've gone and picked some fruits, but they've gotten all mixed up with my fake fruits. Can you guys help me separate them into fake fruits and into real fruits? Let's take a look. Let's start off with the pineapple. This one's really tiny. I've never seen a pineapple like this. And this one is really big. This one's smooth and this one's prickly. I think this is the real one and this is the fake one. Hmm, what else do we have? Some grapes. Well, let's see if we can tell the difference. Hmm, I can't pull these off. I can pull these off. These have got juice inside of them. These don't. This is the fake one. This is the real one. What else do we have? Uh, the Nachi. Mm, this is a tough one. Their colors are almost identical. This one's got Velcro inside of it. This has to be the fake one. Ooh, banana is my favorite. Hmm. Well, I can't peel these. These definitely have to be the fake one. Did you know that the Bible tells us that we should grow real fruit? Did someone say fruit? I broke a tooth! Zeb, you don't have any teeth. And this is fake fruit. Yeah, that's disgusting. Why would anyone want to eat fake fruit? No, I wasn't going to eat them. I was trying to show everyone the difference between fake fruit and real fruit. Did you know the Bible tells us that we should grow real fruit? What? But how is that even possible? Puppets can't grow fruit. Can children grow fruit? I mean, I've seen them get all sunburnt and look like a tomato. Is that what you're talking about? No, that's not what I'm talking about. When the Bible says that we should grow good fruit, Jesus was talking about the way we love him, the good things we do for him, and the way we tell other people about him. When people look at us, they should be able to see that we belong to Jesus. When you look at an apple tree, you know it's an apple tree because of the fruit that it bears. Ooh, it has apples, that's right. So, so, Jesus doesn't want me to be an actual tree. No. It's just a way of helping me understand how I should live. Exactly. Uh, so how does God want me to grow this real fruit then? Hmm. Well, let's pretend that we're trees. Can you pretend to be a tree? I am a tree. Okay, so let's take a look at these two pictures. Zeb, where do you think the best place would be to grow a good tree? In the desert, by the river. In the desert, or by the river. In the desert, or by the river. By the river, of course. The desert is way too hot, and there's not enough water. Trees need water to grow. Exactly. So, God wants us to be like a tree that's planted by the water. So, I need to go and live by a river? I hope I don't have to go and live by the Yuxko River. That just sounds yuck. <laughs> no, Zeb, you don't have to move to the Yuxko River. Yeah. Okay, I have an idea. Let's read the scripture and see if you can figure out what God wants us to do. Jeremiah 17 verse 7 Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. He's like a tree planted by water. Oh, I know. I need to trust God. It's easy to trust God. Yes, exactly. So the first thing we need to do if we want to be a tree that grows good fruit is to be close to Jesus. We need to trust him and follow him. The way we do this is by inviting Jesus into our lives and inviting him to be the savior of our lives. That verse carries on and says that when we trust and when we follow Jesus, we won't fear or worry. We will be like a tree that is planted by the water and has enough water to have life. Wow. But that tree there doesn't look very strong. Mm -mm. It doesn't have any roots. Won't it fall over when the wind blows? I 
that's a very good point. Let's give it some roots. Hey Zeb, we also need to be rooted. So what do you think we should be rooted in? I know, <laughs> spinach. Spinach makes you strong. That's what my mom says. And that is true, but no, not quite. Let's read this scripture and see if we can figure out what we need to be rooted in. Ephesians 3 verse 17. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Knowing God loves me makes me feel like I can take on the world. Yep, knowing God loves us is definitely the best feeling in the world. Hey Zeb, yeah? do you know what else a tree needs to grow? No, what? what? It needs sunlight. Uh, sunlight? You mean like the dishing soap? No, not like the dishwashing soap. Like the actual sun outside in the sky that gives us light. Oh, I was a bit confused there. <laughs> I know. Let's watch this video quickly and let's see what these sunflowers do with the sun. Oh, yes. Let's do that. right Zeb. So who do you think we should follow? Uh, um, I think we should follow... Uh... Hang on, let's read a scripture because the Bible tells us exactly who we should follow. John chapter 8 verse 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Hey, that verse says that Jesus is the light of the world. Does that mean we should follow Jesus? Exactly, Zeb. Yeah. So when we walk with Jesus, when we follow him, we will have life. Just like trees need the light in order for them to grow, we need to follow Jesus. And just like those sunflowers always followed the sun, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus through every situation. Oh, okay, so, so what you're saying is when I trust God, and, and when I'm rooted in God's love, and, and, and when I follow Jesus, I will grow good fruit? Exactly. But remember one important thing. You don't plant a seed today and see fruits tomorrow. It takes time. And the fruit in our lives is exactly the same. It takes time. Okay. God wants us to spend time with Him every day, getting to know Him better and better. And we do that by praying, reading our Bibles, worshipping. And as we do that, as we stay in God and we get to know Him better, we will be like good trees that always bear fruit. Oh yeah, I'm going to do that. Great lesson guys. Amazing how God can use anything around us like a tree to help us know how God wants us to live. Let's listen to Colossians 1 verse 10. Colossians 1 verse 10 Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. I don't know about you guys, but I want my life to produce fruit. Today we learn just how to do that. So, let's play a bit of a game. Go fetch water, a glass of water, something you love and a light. If you don't have a light, go to the nearest light switch. Press pause now. Are you back? Great job! So, the three things we learned is the water reminds us to trust in God. So take a sip. Mmm, trust in God. Grab the thing you love and give it a squeeze because we should be rooted in God's love. Rooted love in God's love. Then, run to your light and switch it on because Jesus is our light. 
I will follow Jesus. Guys, do you think we can do that again? But faster this time. Yeah, we can. Let's, Let's do, do it. this. Let's do it again. Trust in God. Trust in Trust God. Trust in Jesus. Be rooted in God's love. Be rooted in God's, God's love. love. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Which quick. Oh, follow Whoa. Jesus. You want to do it faster? Faster. Faster. Okay, okay let's, let's go. Let's go. Trust in God. Trust, Trust in, in Jesus. God. Be rooted in God's love. Be rooted, Be rooted in, in God's, God's love. love. Follow Jesus! Follow Jesus! To the hot sheets! I'm ready there! Wow guys, well done! If you do all these things, you will produce fruit. See you next time!